Hi, my name is Kushal and welcome back to this mini series on a beginner's guide to start. In the part 1 of this video, I showed you all the steps required in the pre-modeling stage. This is going to be part 2 which is the modeling stage. If you haven't watched the previous video, please go and watch it now. otherwise you'll miss some key elements also if you haven't subscribed please do so it is your love and support that drives me to making these videos if you have watched my previous videos you must have a good understanding as to what you need before learning stat the tricks to creating managing and sharing your stat pro work as well as all the pre modeling requisites also if you have followed my previous video you must have a good enough sense of the stad interface now we'll be uh, diving deep into the interface in our uh, coming videos but for now if you have watched my previous videos you must have a good understanding of the interface however if by any chance you have missed those videos please go and watch them before starting this video otherwise we won't be on the same page i can wait here i am not going anywhere <laughs> I provided the link to the uh, playlist in the description below. You can just go ahead and click it and watch the entire series and come back to this video. Uh if you have watched everything, well done. Uh this video will be all about creating uh, the model. This this is the modeling stage and we'll be using our uh, previous example of the uh, cantilever structure. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I created a folder uh with my file called cantilever i'll just get into this folder i'll open the std file this is the stat file again watch one of my videos and you'll know what i'm talking about so i'll just click to open it now since i i didn't create anything this is asking me to uh, set up the input units again i'll leave it to the defaults and this is where you end up So as I discussed in my previous video when I was discussing the interface this part here is called the page controls and this is where the actual modeling and in fact uh, the post modeling uh, features come in so for the modeling part we'll be taking up these three which is the setup the geometry and the general tab so let's start with the setup uh, now uh, this is not actually required but if you are a document managing freak like me you'll end up uh, filling this out so the job is tutorial for youtube the client is youtube job number i'll name it 1 and you can leave it all so uh, this is not really required but it's a good practice to do this if you are going into or if you are planning to be a professional here okay fill in the details of your project and let's move down to geometry in the geometry will again move from top to bottom in this case we just need to create a beam so we won't be going into the plate the surface the solid the parametric models and so on we'll be just dealing with beams now once you open the geometry tab and the beam tab you'll get this snap node beam creation thing uh this is a grid which you can use to create beams so you can create a beam of 1 meter length 2 meter length and so on now most of the uh, youtube teachers out there or in fact any teacher of start will teach you to uh, start with this and yes this is a beginner friendly model to use but in almost every practical case you will never be having the exact dimensions of beams personally i find it very annoying to use but let me just show you how you can create our structure in our example we are using a 6.5 meter cantilever beam out here you don't see a point uh, you just see a 6 and a 7 so all you need to do is create an interval so you have the grid here this is the default grid you can go ahead and edit it all you need to do is change the spacing to 0.5 and since you're changing the spacing to 0.5 and if you hit tab you'll see that you have 10 units of 0.5 each so it goes to 5 uh, you'll need 6.5 so ultimately you'll need 13 so you get this so all you need to do is click on 0 click on 6.5 click okay or click escape and you have your beam of 6.5 meters ready yes uh, the snap node beam works in uh, simple cases but as i said i find it annoying and if you're planning to be a professional uh, structural engineer i would recommend not using it ever 
So let me close it and show you the correct way of using it. So every time you need to create any beam or any structure, just start with a single node. So here you see two uh, windows open. One is the nodes, uh, the other is the beams. So we'll start with the nodes and we'll keep on doing translational repeats. I'll talk about everything in very much detail. Just for now, uh, just keep following me. Uh, I'm trying to give you a checklist of how it should be done. And I don't want to start off on the wrong foot and teach you the wrong ways of doing it. So just quickly go and create a node at the origin by giving the values of X, Y, Z coordinates as 0, 0, 0. So you have this node ready. To just select this node, you need to have the node cursor on. So select this node, go to geometry, click on translational repeat. So in our case, we need to have this node shifted to 6.5. So just go to spacing, call it 6.5. We just need one step and we need to link these steps. And that's all. So you have this beam ready. Yes, uh, it may seem like a lengthier process, but when it comes to huge structures, this will end up being the shorter one. And if you are planning to be a professional uh, structural engineer, I I'll suggest that uh, you follow my lead on this one. Just, just follow me on this one. So let's uh, move on to the next aspect of the modeling stage, which is the third part, which is the general tab. In the general tab, we'll be creating a lot many things, but in every case in the general tab, we'll have two steps to follow. The first would be the creation part. The second would be the assignment part. Just keep that in mind, creation and assignment. So the first step would be to create something and then the second would be to assign it on something. Okay. So in general, first we go to property. I'll talk about all this in very much detail later. Just follow along for now. We'll go to define, uh, go to rectangle. So YD is the depth. Uh, we'll give the depth to 0.6 meter and we'll give the width to 0.3 meters. We'll add it. So this is the creation part right here. So we have created a property with a depth of 0.6 meter and a width of 0.3 meters. Now we have to assign it to the beam. Now the assignment method, as you can see here, are uh, you can do it in four ways. You can assign it to the selected beam, to the edit list using cursor and assigning to the entire view. You can use any of it as you may please. I find it easier to use the cursor to assign. So I'll just assign, click on assign. Once I move my cursor inside uh, the display window, you'll see the cursor change to a member. I'll just click on it. The signing part is done. Now I can actually close it. Now here's a very quick tip. Once you start building uh, bigger structures, multi-story structures, editing it and uh, deleting some of it and uh, recreating parts of it, you'll end up missing the part where you assign properties to every member. So you will leave some members here and there. And this will lead to errors and you'll end up mad over finding that one element which is missing the property. So the tip is quite simple and it's actually quite intuitive. So rather than going to the style editor file and just numbering all your beams and columns and finding which you have missed, it's better to use the visual cues and style pro in fact provides you a very good way of checking out how your structure would look in 3d. So if you go to view as it's uh, intuitive again, go to 3D rendering, just click on 3D rendering and suddenly you have your 3D view right here. So as you can see, I have my beam as 60 centimeter deep and 30 centimeter wide or 0.6 meter deep and 0.3 meters wide. So just in a glance, I can see that I have uh, actually assigned the property here. So the next step uh, in the general tab is specification. This is uh, usually used when you are trying to play with the, the node conditions or the beam end conditions. Uh, for now, we'll just skip it uh, as it's not required. We'll move on to support. There are various kinds of supports. As you know, the fixed support, the roller support, the pin support and so on. In our case, we need a fixed joint. So again, we'll be creating and the second would be to assign it. So let's create a support, click create. The first option is fixed. I'll just create a fixed joint. So I have this 
support created next is to assign it i'll click on assign use cursor to assign again i'll bring it to one of the nodes and click it so now i have i'll click on assign again so as you can see i have created a support and i have applied it on one of the nodes the next part is creating loads so creating loads is actually a three step process it's actually a two step process but one step is just a layering part so as you know uh, the loads are divided into various categories so we call some dead loads we call some live loads and so on so the first case would be to define the type of load you are building the next would be to actually create the load and the third step would be to assign those loads so let's go to the load case detail tab just click on add in the title i'll call it dead load dl in the loading type i'll call give it dead i'll click on add and i'll just close it so i have created a type of load or a category of load rather now inside this dead load i'll just click add again and this opens a window as to what types of load we want now i'll talk about everything in very much detail for now i'm just giving you a step by step checklist of what you need to do to have an error free file so in this case we need a member load or a udl so i'll just click on member load i'll define the value to uh, what we took as minus 10 a minus is because we are going in the opposite direction of y so this is the global y axis gy stands for global y i'll talk about the global and local axis in a in an entire video this is a very important topic so we are going for minus direction just because as you can see y goes up we need the forces to be down so a minus 10 value we'll just go and click on add so we have created a load as long as you see a question mark here you you can be assured that you haven't applied these loads anywhere so now we need to apply these loads i'll just use the cursor to assign i'll click assign and i'll click on the beam so as you can see the loads are applied i'll click on assign again to uh, come out of it so uh, we have done it we can go into the material and change the material properties if you like for now we had created the beam to be concrete if you don't remember uh, you can go to property check this and this is the material where we uh, gave the default material type so unless you want to change the default properties of the materials the default materials you applied you can just leave this option as is and this is all there is to modeling your structure yes we have skipped many steps and yes i have not gone into the details of everything but as i said earlier this is a checklist or rather a flow chart of how you should proceed to creating your structure so that you get an error free file i'll be talking about every topic in very much detail in the upcoming videos in the next video we'll look into the post modeling stages and actions If you found some value in this video please 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 hit that subscribe button and the notification bell that pops up later it is your support that keeps me going so for now bye bye and uh, see you on the next one